The first of the Bone graphic novels serves to introduce the characters and set the stage for the rest of the series, of which there are nine books in total. It does this while having a very nice story arc of its own and being really, really entertaining. I can't do this without talking about quiche. If you want to know why, eat the eat the books. If you want to know why, read the books. It starts out with the three bone cousins on the run. Fumblum is the practical resourceful one who is the one who packed a go bag for them. Smiley Bone is the kind-hearted, generous, but also generally clueless one. Actually, this one is also kind-hearted and generous. Hey, Josie. Come on up here. Hey. Hey. Yes, that's quiche over there. No, you may not eat it. Hey. Aww. And Phony Bone is the reason that they're all on the run. They can't do this to me. You can't do anything to a rich person that he doesn't want. Gasp. Oh, the horrible injustice of it all. I'm still reeling with shock. I'm a respected community leader, a shining pillar of moral strength. So a couple of business deals with Sarah. Is that any reason to run the most beloved bone and boneful out on a rail? Yes. Beloved? The mayor declared a school holiday just so the kids could come and throw rocks at you. The three of them are separated after being assaulted by a storm of locusts, and each of them individually make their way into a valley that has never ever heard of their home. Well, Maybe the valley has, but that comes out in prequels. The story follows Phonebone, who has a guardian angel of sorts, or a guardian dragon, who protects him from the ever-hungry rat creatures. Phonebone finds his way to Fern, who he has been told by a very helpful bug named... This is horrible, I cannot remember the bug's name. Ted! So Phonebone was told by Ted the bug that Thorn might know how to get him back to his home. Well, it turns out that Thorn is completely, totally unfamiliar with Boneville, but she is quite happy to help him find his cousins. Although she thinks he's totally making up the stuff about the dragon. And you know what else? I think the dragon is following me around. Phonebone, we've been over this a hundred times. But I'm telling you, I saw one. He had a goatee and a cigarette and big old hairy ears like this. Dragons are make-believe. You are seeing things. Thanks for the surprise, Thurn. You know what? That's what the dragon wants you to think. He doesn't want you to know he exists. Actually, I just want you to think you're nice. Thorn's grandmother, Grandma Ben, shows up. She reminds me a bit of old Ben Kenobi, and it becomes that the leader of the rat creatures, along with some weird, creepy, hooded guy, has designs on one of the bone cousins, but no one knows why. And even Grandma Ben and her good friend this is horrible. I'm just blanking on names. It's too early in the morning. I, I need more coffee. Lucius. And even her good friend, the barkeeper Lucius, who has been around at least as long as she has. And a great red dragon. All of them know more than the youngsters, like Thorn and, of course, this one. And yet, even they've got more questions than answers. Oh yeah, but I haven't said what the actual plot of this is. Basically... The rat creatures want one of the bone cousins. Will they get him? And why do they want him? But yeah, it's really amazing, wonderful book. I love it. I wish that these graphic novels had been part of my formative years. I really, really wish they had been. These are the books that introduced me to Quiche. No, 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 no. Okay, here is a little bit of the crust. She likes the crust. These are the books that convinced me to read Moby Dick. If you want to know why, read them. If you like fantasy, if you like grand epic stories, if you like graphic novels with great artwork, if you like dragons, if you like exploring the idea of what dreams are really about, I do recommend these books. They're good. You're hoping for more food, aren't you? Mom, if you're watching this, please don't be upset with me for giving your dog um, coffee. And she likes coffee. I also talked about a prequel, which was written after these books, Rose. Hi! And it's about old Grandma Ben and the troubles that she got into when she was Thorne's age. So, story about this particular copy of the book. This is the copy that I first checked out from the library. After reading it, I handed it to my mom and I said, you have to read this. So she carried it with her. There was also a water bottle and a camera in her bag. The water bottle leaked. This was in between the water bottle and the camera. And as she puts it, the book sacrificed itself to save the camera. She works at the library, so I made her return the book and claim responsibility for the damage. It was withdrawn due to water damage, but it's still totally readable. So they 
handed it to my mom to bring home to me. So this has a special place in my heart, even though I also have a much nicer copy with color pages. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to hear me talking about more books while drinking coffee, hit subscribe. Googling, can dogs have eggs? Yes. Well, she's making a mess, but she's also cleaning up her mess. Oh shit, I just taught her that she can get food by begging when I'm sitting here.